so we can conduct all of our computation just by using Unix pipes. But the MapReduce framework gives us additional benefits in order to execute the same computation. We get fault tolerance. So if we run the MapReduce across many machines, and one of those machines crashes, then that same amount of work will then be scheduled on another machine instead, and it will still complete. It automatically reruns failed tasks. We also get some benefits for speed, because one machine might be slow because it's overloaded. So the framework can, if it wants, run multiple copies of a task and keep the result of the one that finishes first. We get benefits of network locality, because data transfer between machines can be expensive. So the framework tries to schedule map tasks on the machines that already hold the data to be processed. This only makes sense if we have a scenario where we've distributed the data across lots of machines already, which is a typical way in which large data sets are stored. We also get some benefits of monitoring. So do you want to know when your job will finish? The MapReduce framework will try to estimate that for you. So we get a web-based interface describing the jobs that are running and how much progress they've made so far. Let's take a look. So here's the current job queue, which says that there are no jobs found on the default queue. Well, let's change that by running a job. So the way we'll do that is run the MapReduce script that's provided as part of this course. You'll find this in the lab, which is just a very thin, simple wrapper around the Hadoop implementation of the MapReduce framework. And mr.py has a program called, has an option, run, where I specify what mapper I want to use, what reducer I want to use, the input, which has to be stored already on Hadoop's file system. I've done this before for you. I've stored the entire collective works of Shakespeare on the input directory called Shakespeare. And finally, we choose an output directory. How about the vowel counts? And we send it to work. Now it's gonna do some setup, and then it will tell me that it's running the job, and it gives me a URL in which I can track the status of this job. So here it is. It's told me that it's already completed mapping over the entire data set, which was bytes, 4 million bytes of input. That's all the letters that Shakespeare ever wrote. But currently, it hasn't finished with the reduce. It's only 81% of the way through now. And we see a graph of the reduce uh, completion. So we can see that it's already done all the copying, all the sorting, but the actual computation of the reducer is not yet finished. Okay, now it appears that it's done 100%. We can go back to our terminal and find that the job is finished. It was also giving us some text output along the way, telling us how much reducing had it done so far. So in every few seconds, it finished another chunk of the work. And then if we want to see the output, we can just cat together all of the output in the vowel counts directory that was created by running this program. And we'll see that Shakespeare used 233,000 A's even more E's, not so many I's, more O's than A's, and very few U's relatively. So that is the MapReduce framework in action running on a single machine. It's all running on my laptop currently. But the same interface and the same approach could be used to spread that computation over lots and lots of machines if we wanted to, for instance, count all the vowels on the entire internet.